Hi, welcome back. Welcome back. As uh, people filter in, please uh, please find a seat. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, the rest of the program. Several other people coming on. It's going to be a pretty uh, pretty interesting afternoon. It has been interesting so far. Um, as Matthew said, I'm Mark Baumster. I'm the um, Education Week Government and Politics Editor. And I just want to say it's been been uh, quite a wild ride for everybody this year. It's been in the uh, in the in the uh, federal politics beat. Uh, as you saw from our reporters who were up here, they have been all over the country staying on top of what the implications of of uh, these changes have meant for public education. Um, it's been a quiet ride, qu quite a quiet ride for everybody, and I don't just mean the election. Um, I want to ask people to do a little bit of just a, a, a think back. Just think back about a year ago. It was just about a year ago when we uh, it, were in the middle of an election campaign. All the debates were taking place. There was plenty of speculation about what was going to happen with the presidency, what was going to happen with Congress. At that time, Congress was in the middle of just a couple of weeks away from doing something that many folks thought they would never get around to doing, which was overhauling the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to remember, but uh, the, after all of that talk, after all of the concern about the outdated No Child Left Behind Act, there really was a bipartisan consensus, something that many folks found surprising at that time, uh, to come together and, and to revise the law, which became the Every Student Succeeds Act. And ESSA was hardly, it was a long time coming, but it was hardly the only thing that was happening in the education policy world or in the nation at that time. Um, we can all take a look in, in the course of just the last eight years over the tenure of the Obama administration. There was a tremendous amount of changes that have, that have taken place that affected public education in general. Uh, the uh, administration came back at a time, uh, came into office at a time when school districts and states were still clawing their way back from the Great Recession with huge impacts on local capacity, on their ability to continue funding their programs. Uh, the economic stimulus program raced to the top. All of the federal money that was at hand for the federal government at that time allowed for a, a pushing and a swaying of education policy in some pretty unexpected ways. Um, states jumped on board with the Common Core state standards, and all we all know what that, what kind of uproar, disruption that caused, adopted by many states at the same time. Much political pushback. Uh, much of the, uh, much of that continues at this time. And at the same time, we've, we've seen, as several of our speakers alluded to, huge demographic changes that have continued to take place uh, in the school systems, in the student population itself. The shift to a majority minority school enrollment around the country, uh, the continued role and influx of English language learners and their unique needs in the school systems. Uh, all of this was happening at a time when, uh, when uh, states were attempting to really flex their muscles and define themselves in their role with regard to education policy and the federal government. So here we are, we are stepping back into this environment with a brand new federal education law on the landscape. Um, the states, the feds, the uh, school districts are all trying to figure out what that means in practice, how they're going to relate to each other. And they're doing it with a new White House team, of we've, as we've heard, which really has, not, has yet to show all of its cards on education policy. So what's next? Um, I, I wanted to just recap briefly some of, um, some of what we heard in the course of the first speakers. I think uh, uh, there was so much coming at us all at once. I was trying to take some notes along the way just to get a good sense of the, of the takeaways from folks. There were some common themes, and, and uh, the people who were here before really, really sounded some, some unique things. I think from, from Laura Brown, I was particularly struck by her comments on the, the possibility, maybe the hope, of some bipartisan compromise or action uh, that may take place between the major parties if they are able to recognize that the, the pushback of uh, public cynicism that, that was expressed by many of the voters in the most recent election cycle is something that, is a, that contributes to this, this cycle of, of uh, elect and throw the bums out. Uh, that, that, that may be an opening if, if uh, politicians and policymakers are able to seize it going forward. Uh, she mentioned also that there may well be money for infrastructure that could be shaken out of, uh, out of Trump's proposals, and there could be some bipartisan room for that. Now, this is something that could, uh, could 
result in, in money being shaken down for in infrastructure at the school levels and at the state levels should that come to pass. Um, and um, in her view, Trump may actually care about education. We don't know an awful lot of what he's said aside from school choice, aside from some comments having to do with child care. And yet, uh, this is something that, that rhetorically was on the agenda. It's something that could be, that could be seized upon. We're yet to, we've yet to know what, whether that's going to happen or not. Uh, the Ed Week reporters who were following the campaigns very carefully, uh, they, every, they along with everyone else know that, the, that both Trump and his education secretary designate, they're essentially, um, they're essentially tabula rasa on, on education policy with, with a couple of exceptions. Although at the same time, uh, there's some, some significant concern on the parts of the civil rights community about enforcement, about whether the guidance is going to be maintained from the states and from others going forward, uh, whether they're going to get what they need from the federal government in the role that it is continuing to, to need to play all the way along. We do know also that, that with the state's legislatures, with state superintendents and governors taking more control over education policy, um, that uh, the, we're going to be looking much more closely at a, at a political structure which is dominated by the Republicans at the state level. And yet that breaks down in many subtle ways. There's not really a, necessarily a monolith as to where that's going to be going. So that we are going to be looking very closely as state legislatures convene in the next month or two as governors begin to roll out their specific policies and, and budget proposals as they uh, lay out their education agendas in their state of the state speeches to see where this thing is going to go going to go forward next. Um, we also know that that uh, the education department is going to need to cope with regulations that were on the table from the outgoing administration and it's a good question whether some of that will be rolled back by the incoming administration uh, in the form of congressional review in the form of policy fiats. So, the, that is really the context in which, in which all, of the, all of these predictions are taking place. Um, I'd like to shift gears just a little bit to take a look at the speakers that we have coming up next. Um, if the folks who were speaking to us this morning were essentially looking, to some degree, looking back to the, to the, to the election itself and trying to read some tea leaves, um, we're hoping to get some big picture perspective from the next series of speakers on the path forward um, and the political cultural shifts that, are, that we're all trying to absorb at this point. Um, we're going to be hearing in the next few minutes from um, Atlantic's national correspondent, James Fallows, who's been on the road and in the air all over the country, listening to folks about uh, uh, from the ground about their insights as to uh, what they feel about about public education, what they feel about the changes that are taking place in society itself, and how that fits into the, the role of policymakers going forward. We're also going to be hearing from Cecilia Munoz, who is director of the Domestic Policy Council in the Obama administration. She's really in an ideal position to share with us some of the things that will still need to be done on public education uh, in the road toward, toward assuring that, that public schools are, are at the best quality for all sorts of students, what the unfinished business is of the administration that will be leaving office, what are some of the challenges and the opportunities that are available for the next administration. And we're also going to be hearing from uh, a pair of folks who, will, who are actually at the state level, who will actually have their hands on the, on the levers of policy, people who who it falls to to take this new federal education law and the priorities in their own individual states and to make them real in their own schools. Um, we'll be hearing from Minnesota Education Commissioner Brenda Casilius and also from a Maryland State uh, Board of Education member, Laura Wheeldryer. Uh, and they, they're the ones who are going to be involved in this get acquainted period with the new administration nationally. They're the ones who will have to navigate between all of the political and policy currents with their state legislatures, with their governors, and uh, they're going to have to do that uh, against the backdrop of, a, of uh, strict accountability systems, of the continuing rollout of, of ESSA, the continuing implications from, uh, from, their own, from their own standards. So with that, um, what I would like to do is I would like to turn things over now to Maria, Maria Vols Ferguson, who is the Executive Director of Center on Education Policy. And she'll moderate our first panel from, uh, from our state level policymakers. Thank you. 